see. Indeed, uh, Senzo will be part of a, a, a chairing uh, organizing. Uh, he will be full time as well as the Gota Lohete. They will be because in the ANC now we need some of the comrades to be full time. So Senzo and the Gota Lohete will be full time in organizing. As the country prepares to commemorate Human Rights Day and the signing of the Constitution, well, one institution that is still respected by many is the South African National Defence Force, a product of the Constitution. And un unlike in Zimbabwe, where the army got involved and led the political transition, in South Africa, the recent transition was left to the politicians and the pride of the nation, the SANDF, did not meddle in political affairs. The first commander-in-chief taking the salute in 1994. Please welcome Mr. Thabo Mbeki, the President of the Republic of South Africa. And five years later, his successor, the second commander-in-chief, followed suit. It was during his recall, the South African National Defense Force demonstrated its respect for the Constitution. And again, a smooth transition for the third commander-in-chief, a short stint and the fourth commander-in-chief took the reins. He was also recalled. These are the men and women who have pledged allegiance to the Constitution. They've also pledged allegiance to the people of South Africa. And behind me is the equipment that they use to ensure that they serve with the dignity that the people of South Africa deserve. And on the other side is the man who has pledged allegiance not only to the Constitution, but has also said that he will uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution. His name is Cyril Ramaphosa, the Commander-in-Chief of the South African National Defense Force. Again, the South African National Defense Force remained focused on its core function. Your task is to protect the integrity of our democracy. Your task is to protect our constitution. Your task is to protect the people of South Africa. And we are very pleased, General Shoke, that this defense force that you lead has remained committed to that task. I was extremely pleased just last week when I met on a one-to-one -one basis with General Shoke, and he assured me that this SANDF will never get involved in politics. This SANDF is there to protect the people of South Africa, whoever the commander-in-chief is of our country. The pride of the nation, as the country commemorates brave men and women in uniform, a proud moment for those who were part of the integration. For us, country comes first. Doesn't matter who's in power, who's the commander in chief, country comes first. And therefore, um, the defense force or the defense people during transformation, it was so smooth because that is foremost in our minds. Country comes first. The force has also played a role in bringing about peace on the continent. It's not about yourself, but the love of the country and the people of the country, and accepting our government policies, especially the foreign, foreign policy, where we are demanded to leave our own countries and go out and be part of the number of uh, structures like SADC, AU, UN. Then also it demands that we need at least to empower ourselves in terms of education, training to be ready for that eventuality. And for us to save more lives, we've got to train a little bit harder than before. And as the country commemorates Human Rights Day next month, it will continue to look up to the South African National Defense Force to protect the country, an issue that is enshrined in the Constitution. Sophie Mukwein, SABC News, Johannesburg. The Independent uh, Police Investigation